My name is Ian. Um, I lead the global business development team in, in A2. And uh, I'm really happy today to be in this beautiful city to share with you guys some of our, our latest um, um, sharings. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about how do we leverage data and uh, AR technology to create like an original um, beauty experience. It's a long name. But um, we try to um, um, talk about beauty industry and we try to learn more as well and we try to bring our technology to the beauty industry to up level as the scale of experience that our users are able to take. So um, I'm from a digital marketing background. Um, I am very familiar with um, social display video advertising and um, back, uh, my, previ um, pre my pre pre previous position was in Chida Mobile, which is also a mobile internet company in China, which is big traffic. So um, my career has always been like connecting like China in industries to the global business partnerships. So it's kind of like other way around besides the the topic earlier today, but you can see some like different insights from my side compared to, to like others. Um, so today we're going to talk about what advertising industry or like the, the ecosystem are like right now. Uh, so people are tired of you see the slides here. Uh, people are tired of like um, people that the advertisers keep trying to persuade them to buy products with just like really great images, great, beautiful um, representer, and uh, like a beautiful product on the side. It's like the, the classic advertising. Look as beautiful tonight. As you like this is one of the ads that, um, that we're talking about. This is a great app. Great ad. Talk about a lot of product features and, and, uh, and how is it. And also like incentive to sell. So free for 10 days to sell. because people are seeing this kind of ad again and again. So this is a, 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 a data from Forrester Research and it talks about like what kind of uh, messaging where, where like users are more easily to take in. So obviously like, like ads that are like more, I like call it in, in China, but like hard ads, it's like more hard to take in. But on the, on, on the contrary, like soft ads are more easily to be Cons consumed by the consumer. So we're seeing that ads on the website or like text messages from brands are, are getting less like attraction. But on the other hand, like natural search engine results or like um, recommendation from friends and family, those are the messages that gets you to conversion, you know, where, where it makes you to decide to purchase the item or not. And we're also seeing that interesting fact that Europeans are even less uh, trust the uh, um, trust less for the, the this kind of uh, business messages. So what what we get from this kind of data? So customer trust at less, and they trust themselves or the people around them or their friends more. So so this is like the the sales funnel where we always learn about from our past books. So awareness, consideration, evaluation, decision, and then purchase. But how do we improve this sales funnel? So it's always the way it is, but how do we change it and how do we utilize this? People talk about sales funnel all the time, but what do we do to utilize this funnel and do the right thing about it? So we have to use data. We have to understand where is your customer? Is it on the top or is it has fallen down or is it on the bottom already? So it's kind of, you have to, it's not, it's, it, it, it has to still depend on the product to make them drop down to the funnel. But the, in, the important thing is, you have to understand where is he, where is she. And the second thing I'm going to introduce today is how is AR going to play an important role inside the sales funnel. So this is a quote from the Sephora's EVP. It says, using data to better appeal their, their, their users and understand what she wants can enable the experience about what she cares across all channels and, and drive up 
but loyalty actually this. So, so understanding all these data can be actually really powerful. So why data matters? I think this is a stupid question, but we still I was still want to list down like what can we do with data. So firstly is detect what is she doing? Have have this user add to cart yet, or is she, is she just viewing your ads? Did she finish your 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 branded video? Where is she? Secondly is you can understand your user demographics more. Is she or he? How old is she or how old is he? Thirdly is. Um, you can understand the trend in real time. Like, what's what's what does your customer like about your product lineup? Does she like the pink ones? Does she like the red ones? What should you roll out next season? These are all very important product intelligence. And you can also like provide personalized messages. Um, if you were in my previous workshop, I talked about a lot about personalized messages. How do we create that? And generate sales coupon to to incentivize them to buy. And how do we optimize the product strategy? So these are the things that we're going to cover today, and how do we use those? So what can we? What else can we improve on the digital beauty experience? So this is not a product. <laughs> this is something from the from Kinect. So this is like the ultimate goal of like product try on and everything. So I, I think the technology is not there yet because like the, the human shape is really hard to predict. Technology level, but for me too, we are very focused on like cosmetic and things. But basically, it's about the same thing. It's like you can actually try it on, but you can avoid the things that can take off the clothes and, and take on the pants. And actually, wear that. You can just try it with a single click. And 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 you may ask, like, how is this better? Like, it just saves time. But what it actually does is the data behind it. So you can get to understand that what users actually want and which one is the one that she tries on very long time. Like the longer she tries, the more likely that she's more interested into this single product. She can engage with different products gestures and stuff, and this kind of things are all like very valuable data. So as we talk through about, walk through this experience while this, while this user trying on different products and taking photos, the data is very important. And secondly, this is a user generated content. So what we're seeing here is that AR itself encourages she or he to create a piece of content, which is the UGC which connects back to the very beginning that I talked about. Um, this kind of user-generated content can actually help boost sales and it's a more, more persuasive content than a, a, a canned or like a very business commercial. This is something that's very authentic. So this is um, something that we are trying to, to talk about. It's like, how does AR create UGC to create an impact in terms of the sales funnel? Okay, let's just skip this. So uh, let's talk about some kind of uh, data uh, or like uh, numbers. So let's talk about what does AR ads and traditional ads, when they compare each other, what do we see? So this is a piece of ad about Lego, and then there's a, there's a research asking them like, how, what would you consider buying this, this toy for your child, and how much would you pay for it? So this is traditional ad. So one, out of 100 parents, 45 of them, because they're buying this toy for a child and paying six pounds, <laughs> okay. And, and, up, and also there's like an AR, AR version of ads selling this exact same product. It's just that you can see the, the product itself in AR, then just put it inside a box. And after this commercial is ran, we found that 74% of the parents are willing to buy it and with a high amount of willingness to pay. So we can see that uh, AR ads can let people to, to decide to buy these things more easily and also pay more about it. So why is that? So there are actually three reasons why people would love AR ads rather than like traditional ads. So the AR ads is one thing is that people feel connected to the item. I don't know if you guys remember Pokemon Go and I don't know if it's a big thing in France, but it's a definitely a very big thing in, in Asia. And, and people are just crazy about it because they feel that 
So this, to, to be honest, it's just like a very simple like swiping game. But people feel that the AR thing inside, like he or she is in the Pokemon world. This is the thing that connects the people into the real world. And, the, and this argumental reality can take away the insecurity. Do I look good in this clothes? Do I look good in this lipstick? Do I look good in this eyeshadow? Those are the very important things for girls to make decisions. Or, or boys, I'm sorry, this turned out to be sexist. But, but this is very important to take away the insecurityness before they actually buy things. Thirdly is people love to be engaged in stories. So like the Pokemon Go, they are inside the story. So that's why it makes the whole content more engaged. So, so to go back to the sales funnel thing, what does the sales funnel look like after implementing an AR strategy in your product? So this is how it's going to look like. So I make it very fancy. So you can take a picture if you want. <laughs> so, so having this AR thing, it can give you more discovery. So like this AR ads, you can create like awareness. And for I think the most important part is the virtual try-on can give you more engagement. And this kind of try-on can allow you to collect the data. And all this data, which some of them get into the the decision tree, the decision phase or the purchase phase, this kind of data can go back for you to do remarketing and by doing look-alike, you can go back to do awareness in the most likelihood of the target audience. So you can create, so it's very important for digital marketers to think about how do you create like an ecosystem to create like a circulation in terms of your media buy. So all the data collecting is for one purpose, one is for co convert better conversion rate at the moment, and for the future, you can have a better ways to target it because you can do look alike with the data that you have collected. So we are talking about like a, like a circulation in this sales funnel. So while you implemented your AR virtual trial, you get more data, and this data can allow you to do a very precise uh, remarketing and go back to the awareness stage. So this is something that I would like to talk about because AR is not just fancy, it's not just cool, it's about trying on. And trying on this can, can allow you to create more data segments. So these are the data that, that we, we see that how AR can impact sales, is that they are more likely to make a purchase, they are more likely to purchase specially cosmetic products, and they are more likely to spend more money on one deal. So this is the numbers that we do in the survey. And let me show you some kind of a, a, um, <coughs> things that Meitu does to embrace the AR technology. So this is what we do with AR. Okay, that's music. Okay, no. You can see that um, we have like all kinds of uh, uh, AR effects that can be done through our app including like cool video event. This sounds a lot cooler with sound on, but <laughs> so we can even do like Hollywood effects and stuff. And some of them we did like uh, like controlling the rain, creating sakuras in the sky is what our apps can do. So uh, I think with, with the technology we have right now, I think only the creative is the limit. It's basically, if you can think of something, the, the AR technology right now, or our technology, is enables you enables you to do a lot of things. So this is this is a lot cuter with this sound. Um, this is a Korean KOL trying out uh, makeup product. So with our app, so in our app, there's a place where you can upload all kind all branded products, and they can try on. So they take a photo with the with the, our cosmetic product, and then they can they can choose with different colors, and then instead of trying on themselves, they could like create a piece of their content, and then and then um, directly lead to the e-commerce <coughs> website for them to purchase it. So this is virtual try on, and thirdly is the the data that we can collect from these. So we have a very sophisticated facial detection um, algorithm. So all the, the, the faces that our camera touches, we can actually understand the gender, the age, and yan zhi. You guys know what is yan zhi. Yan zhi means like the face value, meaning with 
higher face value, meaning you are more pretty or more handsome. It's yet. And also like the, the double eyelid or single eyelid, which is very important for Asians, <laughs> and, and if she's wearing glasses or not. And this is the, this is the data we can capture from our own algorithm. So talk about a little bit about our, our ad system. So um, there are a few things that we do right now. So one is like we can create all kinds of AR effects like you guys just see and put it inside the apps or the apps that are in our alliance like using our AR standards. And secondly is like virtual trial. This is kind of interesting is, is that we, we before like we are more like closed ecosystem. We don't want to like license out our technology, but this year we want to like work with brands and e-commerce platforms to create like an online virtual trial. So we can actually do like try it before you buy it on your on the brand's website or the e-commerce website to utilize our technology to try on the product before the user actually buys it. And thirdly is the in-store beauty analysis, which I would like to demonstrate a little bit later, is that we can put it, this kind of um, iPad in store so that this user, when they get into a store, they don't have to actually try on the lipsticks, they could actually try it on digitally. And the good thing about it is that we can actually capture the data behind it. Okay, so this is a few things we work with Airmen, Airmen, <laughs> and the DKM one. And um, this is the filters that we created. And these are the websites that we can do with, like, I don't know if you guys attended last year, this is the speaker last year, which is a lot bigger than me. <laughs> and this is that we can, they can select on different colors to create different kind of uh, images or, or, or products. So the interesting thing is, this kind of things can help brands to create brand user-generated content. So this campaign leads to over two million times of trying, uh, of, of shared content and, and uh, used over two million times and then shared more than 200,000 times. So this is a way that you can create more persuasive, more persuasive branded message than just like a traditional ad or banner things. This thing, people, people will create content with this and upload it to their social networks. So this is some kind of like brand recommendation thing. So this is something that we can also like um, do with our brands. And <coughs> before that, I, uh, before we talk about this, I would like to invite the beautiful Jenny to to, to, to show you guys how we do like skin analysis better than just, so we are going to do a live skin analysis. Is it, is it gonna tell me my, my age on my skin, that kind of stuff, age my eyelids and age of my ears and the... Yeah, so first thing, <laughs> different product recommendation system for different brands. 
to see what kind of product they want to introduce to their end customers. Okay, so basically, um, I've, I've um, covered about the, 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 the skincare and the light makeup, and I want to announce the latest technology that we, we, we just invented and we just proceed is that we also goes beyond human facial recognition, and then it goes to pets. <laughs> And we found that this is very amusing for Japanese clients because they really love to, to take photos of their cats and dogs. So we created a small video as the last part of my slide today. Thank you.